Hello everyone and welcome back to Europa Universalist 4. I'm Lord Forum and here we are with an updated early game Austria guide. Now, when I say early game, I mean early game. I mean before like 1500. So, this is not a late game guide and some of the stuff later game, I can't really give you great advice on it because it will be very different based off how your game evolves. But what I can do is get you a pretty large empire by 1500 if you play it right. So as Austria, you start out as Emperor of the HRE, which is awesome. You're going to get Imperial Authority really fast because until Paradox goes through and I suspect nerfs Imperial Authority gain, uh, you can get most of these reforms passed by 1500. I got to this one before the Reformation occurred and then I got this one soon after the Reformation started. Um, just through a series of events, dead rulers and some of the Austrian missions. So as Austria, you just recently lost your king, that was the king of both Bohemia and Hungary as well, and the king of Poland died as well in a war against the Ottomans, which is why you started as a truce with them, which is actually very useful. Um, so you have Ladasis Posthumus von Hasburg here, Posthumus actually, um, and over here you have Hungary. Hungary will usually be quickly ruled by Hunyadi. Um, the Hungarian regent, who's a genius general, and there'll be an event where he can take the throne rather than letting, letting Ladasis take the throne. Considering Ladasis tends to die before he takes the throne, uh, it depends on if you get lucky. There's a chance they either go with Hunyadi, Ladasis dies, then they go with Hunyadi, or they don't choose Hunyadi and you eventually get the union anyway. So, I've gotten the union once over my entire Europa experience free. Other times I've had to invade and enforce it. So this guide will assume that you invade to enforce it. So as Austria, as the Emperor of the HRE, your first goals need to be securing re-election. So you have a mission, and this is a very key mission. It's called Secure Electors. Having five electors that are backing Austria and have at least 100 opinion of Austria nets you successful bed for the Imperial Crown, yearly one prestige and diplomatic rep reputation, but more importantly, restoration of union on Bohemia, which basically incentivizes you to conquer Bohemia very early on. You do not start with a truce with Bohemia like Hungary does, which makes this actually possible. So since you're going to be attacking Bohemia, you don't want to ally them and you don't want to royal marriage them. There's another stat where you royal marriage them, get the dynasty on your throne, then invade and conquer them, but you tend to lose stability and people hate you more. So I think this is probably the better way of doing it you're going to want to become friends with the other electors. The Platinate tends to like you early on, so you want to usually get an alliance with them. Alliance Royal Marriage will push you really close to 100. Um, if you need to, you can always improve relations. Uh, Trier and Main are usually other ones. Even if they've uh, rivaled each other, you can usually pull off a pretty good uh, alliance with them. In this case, Main's is rivaled with the Platinate, so I might not pick them. Uh, but anyway, Treyarch, Cologne, Platinate, Saxony is usually good. Um, Brandenburg, you may have to use a Imperial Grace to get it over 100, but you can get over 100 by, well, you can get it by like next year, the end of next year. And you're going to want to, because I think the Interregum lasts like two, three years. So you're going to want to invade immediately. So you're going to want to move your armies up here, raise as many troops as you can afford early on to the point that I wouldn't even hire advisors to start. Um, technologically, if you're going to be doing union strategy as Austria, you're going to fall behind in tech. Uh, it's pretty well inevitable just because you're going to be devoting so much of your money and points to taking land. So the way you get money as Austria is pretty simple. You have the Tyrol gold mine. Uh, Bohemia has the other gold mine in the HRE. Um, yours is better. Uh, it costs a little bit more to develop early on, but you do get an event that increases the production by one. Um, basically, you get a ton of gold from it. Um, it's the Schwartz, I think, silver mine or whatever. Um, it's how you're going to fund your empire for a while. You do have a good amount of manpower income because you get the HRE bonuses and you get good money. You have to stay Emperor, but if you've allied the Electors, they tend to stick around with you unless you offend them. 
Uh, you're going to definitely want a military advisor. Ideally, you want one that with discipline or morale that's level one. You might want to re-roll till you get them. And you're probably going to actually want to focus military power. Uh, you guys have five diplomacy, and you're going to be exceeding the diplomatic five limit that you get plus one for being emperor. Um, but I found military power is a bigger issue because you're going to be fighting wars, and you really need Miltech four and five at least. If not, when everyone else gets it, then just slightly behind. Um, it's basically the way to go. Uh, as Austria, you've got your standard estates. Uh, you've got half decent amount of crownland, but it is important to realize you do have a mission. Get nobility loyalty to 60, burger loyalty to 60, clergy loyalty to 60, and then you get five crownland ownership and they get higher loyalty equilibrium. Now, some people would say do that really quickly. I don't because you can't do the next mission. Uh, until you have 180 development in your Austrian lands. And you have to have a manufactory, I think, technically. Um, I haven't played this past 1550 yet, so we'll see how that goes. So you're going to need to do all of that. And the benefit for that 10% loyalty equilibrium is not huge. The way the states are now, it's almost a joke. Um, but the big key is you're going to want to get restoration of union quickly as after you've secured the electors so basically get the alliances get this causes belly on i said that wrong on bohemia uh, hopefully they don't ally poland they won't really ever ally hungary i found they might ally brandenburg or saxony the key for you i found to getting the union um you can ally hungary and but they do have a truce so they can't attack for a while um I found actually it's allying Poland. Poland-Lithuania tends to rival Bohemia, and just by default, um, they tend to want this land. So I found it easy to declare war on Bohemia, call in Poland-Lithuania by promising them land. Together you guys can crush almost anybody. And uh, then I just didn't give them land. They broke the alliance with me, which is fine, and I got Bohemia as a union. Bohemia, interestingly enough, will keep their two vassals and annex them on their own, which is nice. So you don't actually clutter up your relations that much. And the reason Bohemia will not be a huge issue, because first off, you're gonna improve relations. Uh, you're also going to take control Bohemia, which will give you legitimacy and imperial growth. It'll also give you a claim on this, which you'll own anyway, um, is because the Austrians start with a government reform, the Austrian Archduchy. Reduced liberty desire from subject development by 33% plus nobility influence 5. Eh. It's more the subject development that's great. Basically, as Austria, you can hold more subject land than arguably anyone else in the game, especially if you go down the influence tree. You're going to be sitting at like 48 reduced liberty desire from development. It's really ridiculous. Not that I recommend you do that offhand. So Austria's ideas haven't changed much. 10% morale, 30% improved relations. It's great, allows you to get a lot of people happy with you, allows you to actually fight nations, because Austria is not really a military powerhouse on their own. They only get plus three discipline, unlike everyone else's plus five. However, here's the big one. They have imperial ambition. Imperial authority growth modifier plus 10. Diplomatic annexation cost negative 15%. You're going to want to get that early because one of the first things you're going to want to do when you can is annex Bohemia or integrate Bohemia. Um, because if you do, you will get the electorship Bohemia had and uh, then you'll be able to elect yourself. Plus, you need the land for several of your other missions. You get reduced fort maintenance, national garrison growth. It's nice, but not great. It allows you to have a couple more forts, and when you lose a fort and retake it, your garrison gets back better. It's If it sounds underwhelming, it's because it is. However, you do have one of the really good ideas. You have Fugger Banking, uh, yearly inflation reduction, which is awesome because you're going to be getting a lot of money from gold. It may not solve your gold problem, uh, inflation from gold problem, but it will certainly help. Plus, the cheaper loans are handy if for some reason you fall in debt. Plus do diplomatic reputation. It's your Austria, you want diplomatic reputation. Plus do missionary strength. It's nice if you've got a little bit of non-Catholic religions in your lands. Plus one diplomatic relations as Austria. Kind of feels like it should be two or three because you know you're Austria, but and then discipline and reinforce speed, which is nice. And for your final one, you get chance of new air plus 50. 
which is actually I find more of a hindrance than a help because you really don't want to keep necessarily the same heirs. You want to uh, swap dynasties towards other countries' dynasties and then do unions on them. But uh, if you're not going to do that really reckless strategy, it's pretty good making sure you stay Habsburg the whole game. So that's the basic starting setup for them. Uh, you probably want to consider allying Hungary. Uh, it's up to you. I found it was actually a bad idea to do so, but by allying them early on, they won't find any other allies that matter because everyone will all be tied up in alliances. So you can prevent them allying someone like France, which dooms your chance of a military invasion on Hungary if you try that strategy. So once you've done the mission, you're going to want to do Control Bohemia. You have an event called Imperial Ascendancy, which is actually relatively easy to do. I don't recommend you take it um, when you get it, because it gives you greater land force, diplo power, and diplomatic annexation. You're going to want to save that to your annexing both Bohemia and Hungary, or at least Bohemia. Depends what your strategy is. Uh, Recover Silesia, you're going to get relatively early on, once you get Bohemia, and because you'll control it. Don't take it until you're ready to actually develop that land. Um, it reduces separatism and increases local, decreases local development cost, and it gets you claims on the Polish lands. But why take it unless you're going to develop the area or you're ready to invade Poland? It's not worth taking early on. Then you get conquered Galatia, which if you do this, conquer that area, you get a restoration of union on Poland. Um, and once you do that, um, as a matter of fact, I believe according to one of the other YouTubers I've seen do this, you get an event that removes their cores on the cores that you own. It gets rid of them. So Poland actually likes you. Um, I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what I heard. Um, and then once you do that, you get Austrian empire for 20 years. So outside of that, you have the Austrian Netherlands. So this is important. This is the Bur Burgundian succession crisis has to fire and you have to get it in order for this to occur. Uh, you're going to get several options of what to do. Basically, you're going to want to demand the land for yourself. Um, I can't remember exactly what the decision is called offhand, um, but it might destabilize the HRA a bit, but it's more than worth picking up all this land, which is not part of the HRA now. Um, once you do that, it wants you to create a trade company, which means you're going to have to do colonial. If you do that, you get trade range, colonial range, and merchant. And you get a permanent claim on all centers of trade in India and the East Indies that are level one or higher. Basically, it's incentivizing you to go establish an empire in East Asia. Or, yeah, East Asia, basically. Excuse me. Um, once you manage to do all that, you get a claim on China. And you also get claims on India and uh, Indonesia that border provinces owned by you, which will get you a lot of claims. Once you do that, you can get Riches of China, Highest Trade Power in Canton or Hangzhou, and you've completed this mission. Then you can get Chinese Trade, Trade Efficiency, you get a permanent claim on the South China region and the Australia region. Then you get a mission to settle Australasia. Um, you basically conquer it and you can get Australian Australia. Tariffs, Trade Steering, and Prestige. I. It's cool if you want to complete the whole mission tree, that's for you. Otherwise, this is a rather hard tree to, to do. Um, let's go down this one again. So I mentioned these two. You have to get 180 development in your Austrian lands. Then you get Imperial Capitals. If there's five provinces within the HRE with a development of 30, you can get Imperial Cities, which gets you more Imperial growth. And once you do all that, you can do Imperial... You can do the Viennese Waltz. You have to have your capital of Vienna or Vienne to 50 and have six buildings you have to have advisor with three diplo with three military with three not have a deficit if you do that you get viennese ballrooms plus yearly prestige noble loyalty equilibrium which is nice prestige is always handy for a nation that's all about having high prestige to get unions um then you have the decline of hungary so uh, I'll show you my game once I'm all done with this, but or one of my save files. But um, once you get Bohemia, you're, you should get enough to actually be able to force the decline on Hungary, where you get a restoration union. Make sure you don't take that till you're actually going to invade Hungary. A uh, mistake a lot of people make is take it as soon as they get it, and then they can't invade Hungary for like 10 years, and something happens and they lose it. 
and you're in trouble. If you're lucky, you automatically get uh, the Union due to events, but I found I could invade right after I conquered Bohemia. It didn't weaken me enough. I lost Poland. Uh, I had Bohemia. I did have to break alliance with Hungary, which delayed me for like four or five years. Um, but when I invaded Hungary, it was allied only to uh, Mantua down here, or however you say it. And uh, it was relatively easy to conquer them. They'll get an event where they annex Croatia, and then all of a sudden they become huge. Um, you're going to want to do that relatively quickly, because otherwise once they get Croatia, you do have to get more development to take them over. Um, let's see, let's go down here. So Imperial Ascendancy, you don't want to take till you need it. The Imperial Border, basically if you have to be Emperor, all the countries that border the HRE, you got to make sure that they don't have any HRE land in them, which can get complex considering how big the HRE expands now. In my game, the HRE is up here and the land's owned by Denmark and Russia, which means I'd have to fight them. It's You'll see, it's pretty crazy. Um, but if you do that, all HRE, HRE people like Austria would trust and you get Imperial Authority and Diplo Power. You're not going to be able to do that early on. You'll probably have to survive the whole Protestant issue before you even have a hope of doing these missions. Uh, then if you do that, you get the Holy Empire chance. Basically, Council of Trent finished, the Reformation's over, you've completed this, and you get a chance to get yearly popal influence for the rest of the game, which is awesome, but you have to stay Emperor of the HRE to get it. But by this point, you should have won the whole Reformation religious wars incidents and uh, or you manage to somehow pull it off peacefully, which is tricky. Um, if you do, you've pretty much already cemented your power, so I'm not going to really talk too much about how you do that. Uh, then you can do a Roman Empire if you own Rome and your Emperor. You can do a Roman Empire. You get Imperial Authority Modifier plus 0.1. Gets away if you're no longer Emperor. By this point, you should have already made the HRE an elective monarchy, so this is just going to speed up forming the HRE super state or decentralizing. And then you have the AEIOU, which is basically all the world belongs to Austria. It's a lot. Every HRE member has to like you. You have to make sure all provinces of the HRE are part of it. It's a lot. Yeah. But if you do that, you get yearly absolutism, power projection, which you can, of course, you lose the absolutism if you're no longer emperor. But you should have an elective monarchy anyway. So it's not too big of an issue. Uh, once you do Hungary, you get Royal Hungary, which is nice. You get permanent claims on this area, um, which you can invade and conquer relatively easily. Assuming the Ottomans haven't done it or Venice, it's really easy to pick up Croatia and stuff. You get all of this, you can get, you know, you can rename it Sarajevo and get claims on Bulgaria, which basically is sending you after the Ottomans. It wants you to conquer Transylvania, which you should get when you annex or control Hungary. Once you do that, you get claims here, you conquer these areas, you get claims on all Ottomans in Europe, you kick out the Ottomans. If you do that, you get the Scourge of Europe, which is awesome. You gotta kick them completely out. Um, if you do that, you get Missionary Strength, Diplo Reputation, and some Prestige. Cool, but by that point you should be so huge, the modifiers are not massive. The other tree, Austria by the way, has the largest mission tree, I think. You have Deal with the Bishoprics. You have to own two of the kind of pulsing color provinces. Let's see if I can get a better angle on them. Nope. Uh, I'll probably have to zoom in. Basically, you have to control two of those four. Um, or vassalize them, which is arguably harder. It's easier to conquer them. You get claims in Bavaria. You conquer Bavaria. You get pure Bavaria. Bavarian beer, which is nice, unrest and production. You get a chance to deal with Brandenburg. Basically, it sends you after beating up Brandenburg, or you have to be friends with them. Yeah, you have, the trick is the relative army strength ratio. If they formed Prussia, all bets are off. Um, but you get tons of diplo power, and you get a really cheap army reformer for a while. And then you also have this mission. So the new expansion added some land to Austria over here and gave you a fort, which is nice. Um, you've got to connect it to your empires, which means you either need to go through here or through here. And these are, or at least this one is a free city. So it 
it's arguably easier to take this province here, Bresnigs, or however you say it, and then invade Switzerland and do that. If you do that, you get a permanent claim on lots of this area. One moment. So once you've connected further Austria, when you get all these claims, you get the control Swabia, which is nice and easy to do. At that point, you should be strong enough to invade these guys. This is actually a mission tree here that you can do relatively early on. Um, once you've gotten your unions, or if you don't get the unions, uh, this is a separate tree you can do. It's kind of consolidating southern Germany. Um, you get some de defensiveness. You lose separation, which is really nice. If you conquer it all quickly, you can get rid of the separation completely. Uh, you have Gessler's Revenge, conquer Switzerland. You get claims on Burgundy, Lorraine, and Cambrai region. If you do that, you've reclaimed Burgundy. You get Restoration of the Western Empire, Prestige, Reputation. You get unrest autonomy change lorraine and saxony like you more uh, and then you have weaken france basically have more income than france smash their army you can get supremacy over france morale and rations reduced aggressive expansion this one you could do relatively early on um I think you're more likely to pull it off later. So now if we go all the way back up here, we have the Hungarian question, which is basically you've got Royal Hungary and you go own these provinces. So you can't just control them. You actually have to annex Hungary, which does slow down your chance of doing it. So you can either invade and take these provinces from, from Hungary, um, which works to get this mission done. This is how you do it faster. Uh, I thought it was easier to union them and then integrate them rather than conquering them. You get the Hungarian question. You get Hungarian and Slovak as accepted culture. If they're already accepted cultures, you get some development in some of your provinces. Uh, then you have invest in the provinces. You have to get development up to 10 and 25 of them. So this is where owning the provinces and having integrated them will put you a lot closer to that. Um, it does separate into different regions, so uh, you do that, you get state maintenance, autonomy change, which will help you fully integrate them. But the big one here is you've got the multicultural empire. Um, basically, you have 30 own provinces that the culture group is not Germanic. You have no rebels, no separatism, and really low autonomy. So let's just remind you guys, these are the Germanic cultures. These are not. That's why you start with three of them. You get Hungary, Croatia, and this area, you're going to have enough. So it's not too bad. If you do that, you get reform the Austrian imperial government. This is where you can get the really awesome dual monarchy um, reform. I believe it's called dual monarchy. Uh, Austrian dual monarchy. It basically gives you really good stuff. It gives you diplomatic monarch skill and other stuff. I can't show it to you because I don't actually have it yet. Um, and then if you've done the secure Croatia, we'll jump to this tree. You've got Imperial Italian ambition. You get basically it wants you to invade and kick out Venice. By the way, the old strategy used to be invade Venice early on. I found avoiding Venice until you get to this mission is actually the better way of doing it. Um, because their land's expensive and they get weaker as time goes on. You do that, you get interest and you get a restoration immunion. On Milan. Now, Milan has an event where their old duke dies and they can turn into a republic. If they do that, as Austria, you actually get the one of the options, and make sure to read it, I think it's the bottom one, gives you a restoration of union on Milan. So you can actually get a union over Milan before you get to this mission. Um, I've done it in my game, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and once you get Milan, you get claims on more areas here. And once you control Naples, which by that point you should be massive, you get Italy subjugated, demands, aggressive expansion impact, and you get claims in the whole Italian region, which is awesome. And if you go over here, the balance of power is one you can do relatively early on or later. It really depends. You have to be a great power, rival a great power, and have an ally as a great power. The easiest one to do it on is rival France, ally Castile. Um, you want to ally Castile because there's an event where the Castilians can get a Habsburg on the throne. Uh, and then you can get a union over them. Um, but once you do that, you'll get balance of power, improved relations, diplomatic relations up. 
spread the von Habsburgs, you basically have to have four unions. Uh, or you have to have four countries, excluding Austria, that have a high opinion of you. And they either have to have your dynasty or ruled by you. So, if you spread the dynasty but don't get the unions, you can still get it. Basically, you get diplomatic annexation costs, diplomatic reputation. Um, so, if you do manage that, you could stack that with um, Imperial Ascendancy and get 30% diplomatic annexation, which is awesome. Then you have Shift the Balance. Basically, you have to own 500 provinces in Europe. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Or you have to basically control all of Europe. Uh, if you do that, you get two Diplo Power on your Ruler and Heir. You get Monarch Diplo Skill plus two. Vassalization, vassalization Acceptance plus 25. I'm pretty sure this actually is almost all of you. Oh, no, it's just 500 provinces have to like you, ally you, or be part of the HRE. You don't actually have to own 500 provinces. There we go. Um, so that's pretty awesome. That'll allow you, if you haven't already taken over the HRE, to basically go through and vassalize people in the HRE or pick up all these little estates. The issue is, outside of the HRE, there's no one else to vassalize. <laughs> we'll point that out. Um, once you've shifted the balance, you have crushed the revolution. Somebody must have revolutionary empire. And uh, basically, you have to purge it. If you do, you get unrest and nearly absolutism for 20 years. Okay. Um, basically, the easy ones can be France, if the French Revolution occurs. Uh, if you do that, and you're a great power, then there's no country on Europe that's a great power that has not been allied by Austria or hasn't been beaten by you in 100 years, and you've crushed the revolution. You get glory to von Habsburg, 50 power production and supremacy over Europe, admin efficiency plus 5%. So, now that I've told you all of that and all that craziness, um... Oh wait, I should do ideas briefly. Sorry. So as Austria, you've got different choices for ideas. Um, militarily, you're not in bad shape early on because you have the 10 morale. So I wouldn't recommend taking a military idea for your first group. I'd probably recommend diplomatic ideas or influence ideas, more diplomatic than influence. Um, you're gonna end up with like four to five diplomats just by playing if you've reformed the HRE and if for some reason you become Popple controller. Uh, you're gonna not have a ton of problems with diplomats, but why not have seven or eight diplomats? Plus it increases diplomatic relation, gives you reputation and makes provinces cheaper to take. Plus it allows you to royal marriage people and then break it because lowered impact on stability from diplomatic actions. It allows you to play basically a Game of Thrones much easier. Uh, if you're not into that uh, and you've been doing unions, you might want to do influence ideas, which reduces liberty desire and more importantly, gives you ridiculously reduced diplomatic annexation costs. Stack it with the other ones I've mentioned. You get like 45% reduced diplomatic annexation cost. Um, it's pretty awesome. Relations. Reputation, travel time. <clears throat> You've got vassal force limit contributions. This does stack with the HRE vassal reform. If you force all the people in the HRE to be your vassals, uh, you'll get even more force limit. It's kind of awesome. So basically, I'd recommend either influence or diplo to start. Um, some people would say you can go innovative. Mm, I don't think so. And the rest of these. You could go religious at some point, um, just to force the reformation out of your land. I wouldn't recommend humanists, you'll never really be tolerant, plus you want to purge all religions from the HRE. Uh, administrative is useful, um, not particularly early on though, because you should be forcing unions, but later on when you're invading Italy and stuff, you want the cheaper core creation cost. Um, if you're going to do the whole colonial stuff, you're probably going to want to go expansion before exploration. Um, you can steal maps and, you know, just set up trading posts across the world to get to Asia rather than having to explore for it, which means exploration ideas is a lot less useful because you're not going to need to explore and you only get one colonist and it's all colonial region, whereas your expansion basically it wants you to go after um, Asia. Although it does look like there has been a change since I last looked. Yeah. It doesn't actually give you the ability to fabricate claims anywhere in Asia, which is interesting. 
Let's see if they moved it here. I'm just curious. No. So as expansion ideas, you cannot just fabricate claims in trade regions. Because, by the way, trade regions are everywhere now. So that's a thing. Um, so still very useful, though. You want more colonists, especially because if you do, you'll be colonizing rather late to the game. Uh, if you're going to expand, espionage is relatively good for the reduced aggressive expansion. Pick it like 5th or 6th when you're taking tons of land and it'll help you. Um, trade ideas, not particularly useful, although if you subdue Italy or the English Channel a bit, you can make a ton of money using it. You don't need naval ideas, Austria doesn't have a navy. Basically, you have 10 ships and you shouldn't really build any more. You should mothball these guys or disband them, they're not worth it. Aristocratic ideas, I... It's not terrible on Austria, just because you get the additional leader without upkeep, which, since you're going to have large armies, is actually kind of useful. Uh, otherwise, if you want to be ridiculously morale-heavy or fight France, take defensive for the additional 15. Otherwise, you're probably going to want offensive for your better generals. You really don't need a huge army as Austria. Your subjects should be providing the vast majority of your armies, in which case having a better general and having them attached to you is actually going to be more useful because they have more military ideas than you do. Uh, quality ideas, you're going to want to take that later on. Probably not early. Quantity, you're not going to need it. Um, you're really not going to need quantity because you're going to get a ton of manpower from the Empire. Your recovery speed is going to be good and you're going to have a huge force limit. Um, you could take this if for some reason you don't control the Empire. It's going to be more useful there. That's the ideas. Okay, so give me a sec and we will jump into one of my save files and I'll show you what you can pull off by invading Bohemia, then Hungary by like 15, 1480, I think. Okay, here we are, we're back. So this is a game I was doing. Um, I've gone past this, but this is a save file I made because of the position I was in. So this is 1478. So this is 34 years after the beginning of the game. And this is what I managed to create out of Austria. I've got a union over Milan, Bohemia, and Hungary. And I have picked up most of the Balkan areas that are not owned by the Ottomans. So, work, this strategy works. You invade Bohemia, use Bohemia's might, may have to pay off some debts, improve relations. You invade Hungary, you get them Hungary. You get the event I mentioned, which gives you a chance for a union over Milan. Or you go down the tree and get the event for the union over Milan. Um... And you do pretty well. As you can see, I haven't done a lot of the missions. I've done the Hungary ones, I've done the Bohemian ones, I've saved this and I've saved that. And outside of that, I haven't gotten to these yet. It's just... I haven't gotten to them yet. Um, I'm probably going to ally Castile here. Actually, I did in my game. I allied Castile because they rivaled France as well. And then I was able to start going down the balance of power tree a bit. Um, however, I do not have enough unions right now but um there's a chance you get castile obviously so um <clears throat> so if we look at excuse me <clears throat> so if we look at the hre you'll notice we have three reforms passed in 34 years we probably could have another one but i messed up a little bit um the electors like me and we have 12 free cities we lost one i created a new one um, we did the Shadow Kingdom, so <clears throat> this is why I basically created the guide in the end, is because people had questions about how to do the Shadow Kingdom. So before you had to own all Venetian and basically Papal land, and then you could add it to the HRE and stop the Italians from leaving. It's changed. Basically there'll be a pop-up which i advise you to read because it'll tell you details but you'll get an imperial incident which you'll basically have two options you can either let italy go or you can try and rein them in if you try and rein them in you'll lose imperial authority i think if you let them go you gain imperial authority could be a little wrong on that um you can pick whichever one you want if you're emperor so i picked the reign in the italians um i offended a lot of people but i got the ability to reign in the italians there will be a decision here called Reign in Italy. Um, it's gone now. But if you hover over the decision button, it will tell you which Italian states you have not reigned in. And after a little bit of experimentation, I figured out how you do it. The key is um, you want to check the list to see who you have to reign in. But basically you have to reign in all of this. 
area. Uh, actually, not Savoy. You just have to rein in all of these guys, which obviously a couple of them have died. Sienna died. Um, yeah, and some of the other stuff. You have to rein them in. The way you do that is either you conquer them, make your vassal, or take the land yourself. Or, and this is the really clever part, you just have to get diplomatic relations with them over 50. You have to, 150. You have to get them over that all at once, and then you have a decision. It's really easy now. Um, it's actually really easy. Um, if you look at this, I improved imperial relations, gives you 41. I am just generally improved relations. I'm Catholic. Uh, they were unhappy because I went against them in the diet, so there's an automatic 25% penalty, which kind of balances out the religion. But without it, I'm up at like 80. Um, if you need to, you can just ally all of them, which gets you a fair amount, and then break the alliance. Um, an alliance will get you 50. Um, you do that, improve imperial relations, improve relations, and you're great. Or you can do what I also did, which was send a gift, and then since you're a great power, you can influence them. Once you do that, you get an event, you get imperial authority, basically enough to pass a reform, and you've completed the event. It's really easy now. I don't know why you'd actually bother to invade there. Um, you don't even have to deal with Venice or the Pope. Now, you'll see what the HRE looks like, border gore to the extreme. Um, there's several reasons for this. First off, nations are more likely to join the HRE. The way you do that and keep them is you improve relations. Once they get to 100 and they border the HRE, they tend to join the HRE. Um, the Pope did it pretty much immediately. Um, there were, I had a, a state mission get a relations with the Pope to 100, so I just improved relations to 100 and bang, the Pope was in the HRE. Um, that simple. Um, they'll annex their two vassals, add them as well. You'll get 10 imperial authority each time a nation joins the HRE. So as you can see, I got 10 here. Um, I think Bosnia had joined. Or no, I'll, uh, I think Bosnia had joined before I conquered them. So that was another 10. We had Donzig join. I think at that point, the Donzig was actually the Teutonic Knights because you'll see the Teutons are in it. And then Donzig left. The Livonian and Riga joined just out of the blue. I think they improved relations with me to join, but you could improve relations with them to get them to join. Uh, Lorraine at one point was independent um, and joined. I think Provence also joined at some point and then left. So I might have to improve relations with them again to get them back in if I wanted to. Um, it's relatively simple to get nations. Venice can't, I believe, because first off I'm rivaled with them, but also they're, I think, a little too large. There are ways to correct that, though. So the third reform, which getting the first and second reforms are so easy now, it's a joke. Um, it gets you reputation in diplomats, which is great. The third one give a reason for war on non-members boarding the empire to force them to join it. You can attack, force them to add a province to the empire. So I had a little bit of an issue with this one, so I'll just give you a heads up. I don't know how accurate it is. I fought a war here with Bosnia. They own these two provinces. I fought the war to force them in. It only added this one province to the empire because this was their capital. They didn't actually join the empire, which penalized me. So be aware I think it only adds one province or provinces bordering them because this province didn't border me at the time. So just be a little bit of a little wary. Um, you also can't force huge nations in. Um, I think there's a limit on the size. I can't remember how big they can be. I don't think it'll tell me here. Um, it just tells me to take Warsaw and you can add provinces to the empire. Um, it's a little bit tricky, but you can do it. Um, you can get a ton of nations in the Empire without doing anything. Uh, the only reason these are in here is because I was conquering them before the Ottomans. Uh, but as you'll see, Ragusa just joined. Um, Pope's joined. All the way up here is joined. Now this is actually the downside, is that these nations have joined, but they're owned by Denmark, which means my Imperial Authority gain. There's 31 provinces that are under control of non-member states at this moment. The Burgundian succession hasn't fired yet, so um, I haven't gained control of the lowlands. But as you can see, I should probably get to at least this one before the Protestants hit. And then if I get the Burgundian succession, I could probably get this one, get the permanent diet, pure authority for these cities going up. I could potentially get to this one, which I did in my when I played this further. 
and then you can easily do that pretty quickly. And once you do that, it's relatively easy to centralize the HRE, especially get the religious peace treaty. That's about it. Uh, as you can see, I've only expanded a couple provinces. I had, obviously I took these from Venice, then I took over this province and this province because people attacked me. But I haven't actually conquered into the HRE, and I'm doing fine. Um, I've got 300 development almost myself and 500 in subjects. You really don't need to invade the HRE if you play Austria Union game. The next goal for this, which I did in my other game, um, was basically to go after Poland. Because I'll get the claims and invade Poland. It's just the reason I haven't invaded Poland yet is, well, they have Lithuania and they're actually doing well this game. So that's what it looks like. If you've got Bohemia and Hungary under you, the Ottomans tend not to want to attack you because you outnumber them. That's 57, that's 671 or uh, 69. That outnumbers the Ottomans, plus you get allies. It's really not hard to keep the Ottomans from attacking you unless they've already invaded Hungary. Um, the trick is obviously going to be kicking them out. So take of that as what you will. Um, it's also very hard now, I've noticed, to uh, demand unlawful territory for people. I've already forced these guys to return, but... Specifically, the Bavarians are particularly nasty because they all have claims on each other, so they're all invading each other, and it's really, I found, not worth trying to force them to return land because they'll just conquer it in another two years and then you can't demand it. Um, I'd recommend letting them conquer and consolidate Bavaria and then forcing them to return, like, Nuremberg or Regensburg here when they attack them. Um, and if you can, try and make some of these ones free cities. You already start out with 12, so it's a little tricky, but... If you're lucky, you can kind of box in nations using free cities. It's kind of awesome. So anyway, that, I think, will be the guide to Austria done. In this game, I was doing influence to start to see how that worked. Um, you'll notice I got the one monarch power in each category, which was a little tricky to do. And that's basically where this game was at. But as you can see, if you can get Bohemia in a union by using the electors early on, and then get Hungary, no one can really stop me at this point. It would take alliance between France, Muscovy, Poland, Lithuania, or the Ottomans to actually stop me. So hopefully that helps you guys. The Shadow Kingdom, it's not really clear, but it's 150 opinion and they will be reined in. Um, if they fall below 150 though, they will no longer be reined in. So you gotta keep them all above 150, which is a little tricky. Um, and that should be an early Austria game guide, um, just because it's like 1480, basically. So, have fun, good luck with Austria, and good luck uniting the HRE. I would recommend you go centralization as Austria, but it's really up to you. And as Austria, you should have no trouble. Austria is stupidly strong right now. So, good luck, have fun, and hope you enjoyed the guide. Bye for now.